Hey guys, so today's video is gonna be how I run my house during a power outage on a smaller inverter generator. And um, in today's video, I'm gonna be testing it on a Predator 3500. I recently purchased this 3500. If, if, you're gonna need a couple things to purchase if you wanna do this the right way. Um, there's two things you would need, really, if you wanna to try to run one of these smaller 120 volt inverters and have it power your house. And the issue is, is you need to get to 240 volts <clears throat> if you wanna to try to power your central air conditioning or any large appliance that might use 240 volts. So, uh, highly recommend getting a soft starter, and there's a couple companies that make them. Hyper Engineering, Micro Air, and Hyper Engineering actually private labels a few of their models. I think Emerson's one of them. You did do a little bit of research, but you can find these uh, new for about 250 bucks on uh, the internet. You could find them used uh, on eBay. So they're out there and they're not that expensive. And you're gonna need that if you wanna put that on your central air because what it does is it vastly reduces the incoming um, current when you first turn your air conditioner on. It's called inrush current or surge current. Typically that's very high. It requires a larger generator to kind of get the unit to start. A smaller generator would just trip on overload. Um, so it's vital to have one of those parts and they'll take your inrush current, depending on the size of your essential air, from, I don't know, 60 to 70 amps and they'll reduce them down between 10 and 20, sometimes 30 amps. And what that really allows you to do is use a smaller generator than you normally would uh, be able to use. So that's one thing you're going to need. And another thing you're going to need is a transformer. These smaller generators, I've yet to see one in the 3500 to 4500 range. 3500 being the running watts and 4500 being the surge. Uh, there's a lot of good smaller generators out right now. They all seem to be made by similar companies. And what seems to be the difference is the actual inverter module. I was looking at the Onan, uh, I think it's a P4500, and the inverter seems very stout in that particular unit, meaning that it can hold its running wattage uh, indefinitely, continuously, and then it can surge up to 4,500 uh, watts. But what we're going to be working with is the today is the Predator 3500, and that's a 3,000 watt running unit and a 3,500 watt surge unit. So uh, a previous video, I did this test with two Honda EU 2000s. They were parallel together, and it worked fine. It was able to start the central air in eco mode and not in eco mode. So I was very, very impressed with the Honda EU 2000 in parallel. So we're gonna see how the Predator does today. And the other component I mentioned a little earlier was the transformer. You're gonna to need to find a transformer that can do 120 uh, to 240 uh, on both sides of the uh, transformer. So one side I have wired up for incoming uh, 120, and then I have it out wired to basically it's uh, 120, 240 split phase. So, what you can see in this chart here, I printed this out because, you know, if you're in a power outage, chances are gasoline uh, will be limited. Propane probably would be easier to get, especially if you had it converted and had uh, those 20 pound tanks that you could either refill or exchange. But let's just talk gasoline for a moment. Uh, the bigger generators, they usually use about a gallon an hour, uh, which is a lot. So just imagine you're trying to go to bed at you know 10 o'clock at night or something and then happen to run your large generator. Uh, you're gonna have that running for seven, eight hours at night, try to keep you cool if it's hot outside or vice versa. And you're gonna be using a tremendous amount of gas 
uh, upwards of probably, you know, 10 gallons uh, a day or more, depending on how much you run it. So with these inverter generators, the especially in that 3,000 to 3,500 class, the, the fuel consumption is a lot less than those bigger generators. And, and you know, you might only use a couple gallons a day. Uh, probably the most you would use is five gallons a day. So, uh, I, again, uh, I want to show you something. Now, my central air is a two-ton. It's also a heat pump. When it's running, it uses 2,000 watts. And that includes the compressor the condenser fan and the uh, blower fan. So in total, it's using 2000 watts. My main refrigerator uses 125 watts. I have a refrigerator out in the garage, it uses 80 watts. I have a TV, uses 150 watts. Internet router uses 15 watts. And if I turned on various lights and fans in the house, depending on if they were used and Gonna see if I can power the house with it. Incandescent or LCD or LED or whatever kind of lights you have. I just estimated around 300 watts for lights. So you can see, I can live quite comfortably on 2,670 watts. And if I wanted to cook something inside, I have an electric oven. I could use one of the burner elements on the electric oven and it uses about 600 watts. Now, when you have a smaller inverter generator, you have to you have to ration what you have and what you have on. So the air conditioner is not on all the time, right? It comes on, cools the house down, and then it shuts off. So when it shuts off, I could turn my microwave on for an example. I could turn my electric stove on if I wanted for example. Uh, the, the whole key to all this really is knowing what you want to use during a power outage and how many watts it uses. And there's a device called a watt meter. You can go out and buy that online, Amazon. You could buy it in one of the stores, but it's called a watt meter. You can Google it. It's like, I don't know, $15. You plug it into your appliance, and that's usually your 120 volt appliances. And it'll tell you how much watts it uses, that appliance uses. And then you write that number down. And then, you know, you can get your list of how many watts you think you need and what you want to run um, to feel comfortable. A lot of people just go out and buy the biggest generator they can find. And again, those are the ones that run out of gas. If there's a, you know, a, a, a two week long power outage, their generator is going to be not running because they're going to run out of gas. So I wanted to start kind of showing you how you could use a smaller inverter generator. You do not need to use a larger generator. The key, the two keys are the, well, three keys. You gotta know your appliances that you wanna run, your power outage. You need a soft start on your air conditioner and you need a transformer. And the transformers aren't that hard to find either. You can, you know, I found mine on uh, eBay. I think I paid $50 for it. So they're not hard to find. And you're going to need one if you want to run 240 volt appliances. The other alternative thing you could do is just use uh, 120 volt window air conditioners. You know, a lot of people do that. So they'll just have one or two. My particular house, I don't have the kind of windows that I can put a window air conditioner in. Uh, yeah, I could buy those um, portable air conditioners and then, you know, fab something up and run the hose out one of the window panes or, or whatever. But why why would i when you know my central air is only 2000 it's only using 2000 watts and this house i, I want to say is somewhere around a 1500 to 1800 square foot house maybe probably 50, more like 1500 square foot house so it's not a uh, it's an average house it's three bedrooms two baths it's not like a, an extremely large house and it's not an extremely small house so what we're going to do next is uh, i'm going to go ahead and put a camera up on the Predator so that we could watch the overload light when the air conditioner kicks on. We're gonna try it first in um, without eco modes. We're gonna just turn it on full speed and then we're gonna put, uh, hopefully it starts, and then we're gonna go ahead and put it in eco mode and see if we can start the central air conditioning in eco mode. All right, what we're gonna do is turn on the 
transfer switch here. refrigerators are running if I turn on a light the lights are gonna come on uh, you see my TVs on so fan on uh, come over here I'll show you so you can see my refrigerators on so right now Pretty much everything's on in the house that I would use in a power, but the central air. So what I've done over here is, you can see how it says cool on, right? I could hear the attic fan running. So there's 500 watts up there that I know it's using right now. So the only thing that's not on right now is the compressor and the condenser fan outside. And we're gonna go turn that on in a second, but So basically that condenser fan, I'm sorry, the attic fan is using 500 watts. Both refrigerators, six, seven, 800 watts. TV, you know, 900 watts. So you can kind of see, and I got these lights on here. So you can kind of see why we were at 1300. Let's just see where we're at now. switch don't ask me why this video is so choppy now but I'm gonna take the knife switch plug it in and then the air conditioner is right here so we'll be able to hear it Let's see if I can do this with one hand kind of do this and then plug it in ready here it goes three two one it up. There's a, um, anybody who was wondering what that noise is, it's little things here get in there around the fan. But it started it up. It's definitely working out. I can hear the, uh, hear it running. <laughs> it's working pretty hard. 120 volts, which is good. Maybe 340 watts.
may have temporarily went to overload when I first hit it in. But, so what we have here is the Central Air running on a Predator 3500. Now this is non-eco mode, so what we can do is try that next. Um, see if it will start in eco mode and how it does. So, I'm gonna let this run for a little bit and then we'll uh, get that next test ready. notice as I was looking at the footage on the phone when the air conditioner kicked on I saw the uh, red light on the Predator kick on briefly and I also saw the voltage drop down it looked like 70 some volts so um, that's a little concerning shouldn't have uh, I didn't like how low that went uh, probably not the best thing to do when you're starting up air conditioners is having voltage drop that much. So what we're gonna do now is, uh, we're in eco mode, we're gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna take this knife switch and plug it in. Gotta see what happens here. I don't know if it's gonna start in eco mode or what's gonna happen. Okay, I'm gonna hit this knife switch in three, two, one. Be interesting to see 